I believe that this nation should commit itself of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. So during the Cold War, two superpowers were locked in a space race. The Soviets got a head start at the beginning. The Soviets are continuing to expand their aerospace industry. For it scared the shit out of the U.S., but the Apollo 11 finished first. I won. So a few decades later, there are new players on the block. But the major players in this capitalist space race are not between nations, but between private individuals with deep pockets and a dream. We humans have to go to space if we're going to continue to have a thriving civilization. First up, we have Blue Origin, founded in year 2000 by the richest man on Earth, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Jeff who? <laughs> <laughs> then we have SpaceX, founded in 2002 by Elon Musk. Yeah, Blue Origin came before SpaceX. So I'll be guiding you through their milestones and their Twitter spats and name calling. They don't like each other, and trust me, it's entertaining. Your rocket sucks. My mine flies higher. Mine lands better. Yeah, I don't know why I watched. It's not like I can relate. Then we have Virgin Galactic, founded in 2004 by a crazy entrepreneur who does his own stunts for his companies. Richard Branson. We, we will keep trying until we succeed, uh, unless another team beats us to it. And just so you know, there are other commercial players, but these grab most headlines. If you find the aerospace industry too technical, this is the perfect place to start. I'll be answering these questions one by one, timestamp provided. This trio may seem childish and egoistic at times, but they are the ones crazy enough to pull this off. And you might wonder why NASA is here. NASA isn't really competing with them. They largely retired from earthly missions, like carrying cargoes to the International Space Station, or ISS. They gave way to the private sector to fill that market. You guys build the vehicles, NASA will pay for the taxi rides. In doing so, they can direct their budget to deep space research. Now there's an important question to ask. How do we determine who wins? For there to be a race, there has to be a common goal. These companies though, they set goals that differ and at times overlaps. For example, this guy's like, I want to build cities on Mars. And these guys are like, not interested. These guys want to build a lunar base. But go ahead. So they form their own race. You get the point. But it's a buzzword for a reason. Space race sounds cool. So it's more helpful to frame the race in areas where their goals overlap. Release, release, release. So space travels in the 21st century. It looks something like this. You book a ticket. They will send you up to the edge of space. You'll have four minutes of weightlessness, check out the curvature of Earth, then your life will never be the same. It's impossible to describe just how magnificent it is. It will cost you a quarter of a million dollars. It's the rich man skydiving. It's also fun. And it's fun. <laughs> we had so much fun today. So after 21 years of research and development, this rich man announced earlier in June his rocket is finally ready. Breaking news we told you about. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos announcing this morning that he is going to space. He's taking his brother with him. All in all, it's a historical day. 20 years in the making, Jeff was set to be the first billionaire to ever reach space until this announcement came out. A billionaire space race. Richard Branson announcing his plans to beat fellow billionaire and rival Jeff Bezos to space. A week after Jeff's announcement to space, Richard Branson was like, hold my beer. I'm, I'm going first, Jeff. Back of the line, come on, chop chop. Sorry Jeff, this one's for the history books. It really doesn't matter whether one of us goes a few days before the other. Exactly Jeff, don't worry, you can go anytime. What kind of man cuts in line? No man, no man at all. Well that's not how he reacted. He put on his poker face. He was like, congratulations Richard. A class act on the surface. If you really wanna know how he feels, check out Blue Origin's tweet. The TLDR version is, Hey Richard, you haven't reached space yet. What? What are you talking about? So where exactly is space? It depends on who you ask. 100 kilometers up is what was internationally recognized, aka the Kármán line. However, NASA recognized 80 kilometers above as space. I mean, the view is exactly the same. But in terms of bragging rights, it means everything. And guess how high Richard flew? In between. So Jeff's like, hey, you're a few kilometers short of space. Moreover, we use rockets instead of planes that glide, and we have bigger windows. Yep, Blue Origin flat out made this comparison chart. And frankly, I do agree that big windows are a huge plus. If you had the money, which one would you choose? Let me know in the comment section. So two of them had been to space. What's Elon's plan? He actually booked the ticket. He's flying with Virgin. As far as SpaceX plan for civilian flights, they are looking to launch before 2021 is over. And how high are they flying? 
Not here. Try higher. At low Earth orbit, where the space station is. It's a league of its own. It's like snorkeling versus scuba diving. Obama's budget promises a bold new course for human spaceflight. So in terms of space exploration, Virgin has no dog in this fight. It's a heads-up game between Jeff and Elon. And what's Elon's vision? To put humans on Mars. Why? If anything were to happen to Earth, we still have a plan B. And Jeff's goal is to preserve Earth by tapping its unlimited resource and energy in space. And he wants to expand a lunar base. These might seem like science fiction, especially like 20 years ago. It's amazing how we went from impossible to improbable to inevitable. So how did they get there? Here's an oversimplified timeline to bring you up to speed. Yeah, I'd like to see a self-sustaining base on Mars. I want to see millions of people living and working in space. So back in 2000 when MI2 and Castaway came out, a landowner in West Texas was told a secret buyer is interested in buying up the ranches he owned. It was Jeff Bezos, but no one know what he was up to. And he's like, I'm not talking. No! Musk on the other no! hand was a hype man, but the industry leaders didn't take him seriously. They will regret it. In 2006, SpaceX, a small company with only 500 employees, attempted to launch Musk's first rocket. It blew up. A hundred million dollars of his own money. Poof. Then two more times in the following years. People around him were like, Yo, Elon, you're not supposed to pay so much for fireworks. To truly appreciate these moments, it's helpful to know what the meaningful milestones are in rocketry. And honestly, it could be anything. But these two are critical. Suborbital flight. Simply put, you fly up, touch space, and come straight down. Like throwing a ball. Next is orbital flight, the real challenge. It's not just about height, which is way higher by the way. You also need enough horizontal thrust to stay in orbit. If you don't, you will fall. So that's like a major milestone. Normally you'd master one before moving on to another. SpaceX aimed straight to orbit, and he only has enough money for one more. Then he's done. And we fly. And at last, they got it right. Falcon 1 has Hit made history confirmed. as the first privately developed launch vehicle to reach Earth orbit from the ground. I couldn't imagine the tension. The launch that saved the company. And no one was more relieved than him on that day. Um, definitely one of the best days of my life. Then they do it again with another rocket. Lift off. Then another. This time docking the ISS. The Houston station looks like we got us a dragon by the tail first commercial spacecraft ever doing so. That was a huge deal. In 2013, Blue Origin broke silence because they were fighting SpaceX over this a launch pad owned by NASA. NASA wanted to lease it out. Elon wanted it exclusively for his future launches. And Blue Origin said that Pad 39A should be open to all interested companies. Elon was furious because, dude, what do you need a pad for? You haven't even got so much as a toothpick to orbit. It's so mean, but it's true. By that time, the most Blue Origin achieved was getting their test rocket up to 285 feet. Not that impressive. Moreover, Jeff Bezos started poaching Space Access employees, which irritated Musk. In 2015, Blue Origin successfully launched New Shepard to suborbital space and landing it, becoming the first reusable suborbital rocket, narrowly beating SpaceX by a month to it. A big deal. Perfect landing. We made history today. Musk being Musk, he wouldn't have it. Hey, it's just a suborbital flight. What's all the fuss about? And Jeff, on the other hand, congratulated SpaceX, but it's pretty obvious. The keywords of this tweet, welcome to the club. Hey, welcome to my world. I've been waiting. Jeff Bezos finally got a hang of trolling on Twitter. SpaceX successfully put astronauts on the ISS, an important first. And in early 2021, NASA picked SpaceX to receive $2.9 billion to build a lunar lander to send humans to the moon by 2024. It's a big blow to Blue Origin, and they immediately protested. Alright, in a nutshell, who's involved in tourism? All three. Virgin went there first, Blue flight higher, SpaceX goes last, but will fly the highest and for days. Who is exploring deep space? Only Blue and SpaceX are in the race, and SpaceX is many years ahead. Hands down. Alright, that's it nerds. I didn't bring up different rockets and missions as this was meant to be a primer video. So if you're interested, simply click subscribe and the bell icon. I can do a follow up, it's quite interesting. So are you psyched for the future? Do you think they are ushering in something as big as the industrial revolution or the invention of personal computers? Let me know. I'll see you next week.